I led them with cords of kindness, with the bands of love. And I became to them as one who eases the yoke on their jaws, and I bent down to them and fed them. How we doing today, folks? Shalom, shalom. It's Brother Tinder from Something to Chew on coming at you. Uh, I'm going to throw this one out there first. If you look at the description or the title of the video, there's a link to YouTube. That, that would be a YouTube channel. Um, For anybody who likes watching my videos or whatever, um, I suggest going there, checking it out, subscribing. Make sure you click the bell icon, icon to get notifications. You know, share, like the videos and all that kind of stuff. But uh, with that said, I'm going to talk today for a brief moment. I say a brief moment. <laughs> you guys know how I am. I can always get long-winded. But I don't think today I'm going to get long-winded. But I made a video yesterday that a lot of people watched. I had a few people share it or whatever. And I mentioned in the beginning of it, and I, I, I spoke of the curse of the law. And I've got a buddy of mine, he's been making a, a, a few videos and a lot of posts about the curse of the law. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I need to speak on this subject, the curse of the law. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just kind of hit on this topic. Let me put on my glasses. I think that was Maureen I just seen on it. Hey, Maureen. Hey, Ray. Um, but, um, like I said, the curse of the law. But I, I, let me ask a question. I'm going I'm to pose a hypothetical situation at first. Uh, best one I could come up with is this. Imagine back for those my age, you know, older or whatever, maybe, maybe when you were younger, you went to college and your parents gave you a credit card and they said, you know, you see this in a lot of movies and I, you know, I've, I've known people that, 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 that this happens too, but they'll give you, your parents will give you a credit card and they'll tell you, this is only for emergencies. Don't go don't go racking up no debt on this thing. But, you know, us being young, dumb children, even though we think we're adults and we think we're mature because we're in college and out of the parents' house, we think we're mature, but we're still children. Keep that one in mind. We're still babies. We think because, you know, we're an adult now, blah, blah, we take that credit card and we start using it and we start using it and at first you know you might use it on something you actually need but it gets to the point where you start abusing it and you rack up all this debt on it well eventually the credit card bill comes in and your mom your dad your parents whoever you get a scolding and they tell you they said, this thing was only for emergencies. Don't rack up debt on it because somebody's got to pay for it. Now, they pay the thing off. And then the next month comes around and you do it again. You start charging all this stuff. And, you know, I understand there are some things you've got to charge. But, sometimes, but, but being a child, being a baby... I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't. And you just start racking up a debt again. Okay. Now, now here's my question. What's the bad part? Is it the credit card that's bad? Or is it the debt you keep racking up that's bad? Alright. Now, keep that analogy in mind. And we're going to talk about the curse of the law. I'm going to read one verse, uh, what is this, 1 Peter 2, 24, I'm going to read out of the, uh, 
scripture version today. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna read one one place out of the King James, but anyway, for for right now, I'm gonna read out of the scriptures version. This is First Peter two twenty four. It says, "Who himself bore our sins in his body on the timber." The King James says tree, so that we, having died to sin, might live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we were healed. Oh, now the same verse in the King James says this, 1 Peter 2.24, it says, Who his own self bear our sins in his body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we are we were healed. Okay. I'm gonna read one more verse for now. Galatians 3:13 out of the scripture version. This is Messiah redeemed us from the curse of the Torah, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs upon a tree. Now that same verse in the King James reads like this. It says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Okay. Like I said, we're going to talk about the curse of the law. But I'm just pointing out how in the reason I speak, I read First Peter chapter two verse twenty four. It says that he bore our sins on the tree or the timber. And then in the Galatians three thirteen verse, it says he became a curse. And then it says, "For it is written, Cursed is every one who hangs upon the tree." Now, for those who do not know. That is a direct quote from Deuteronomy 21:23, And that says basically this. It says, let me see. <coughs> can I pull it up? Yeah, I can pull it up. Give me just a second and I'll pull it up. Oh, come, there we go. Um, Deuteronomy 21. And it says this. It says, let... Uh, I'm going to start at verse 22. Deuteronomy 21, 22, and this is the scripture version. It says, And when a man hath committed a sin worthy of death, then he shall be put to death, and you shall hang him on a tree. Verse 23. Let his body not remain overnight on the tree, for you shall certainly bury him the same day. For he who is hanged is a cursed of Elohim, so that you do not defile the land which Elohim, which Yod Hey Vav Hey, your Elohim, is giving you as an inheritance. Being hung on a tree is a curse. Hence, why Yeshua hung on a tree or a cross, a stake, however you want to look at that. I just figured I'd point that one as a side note to the side note for anybody who never didn't know that. Okay, but back to the verse, Galatians 3.13, it says, Messiah redeemed us from the curse of the law, or Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, most people will read that verse, and they will interpret it to say this. Christ had redeemed us from the curse of from the law, let me back up. They'll read it with this understanding. Christ has redeemed us from the law that is a curse. But that's not what it says. It says from the curse of the law. So they equate the law to being a curse. When in fact, that's not what it's talking about. The law brings a curse, but the law itself is not the curse or a curse, however you want to look at it. Okay? Now, how do we know this? If we go back to the law itself, the Torah itself, the instructions of Yah, and we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Now, a lot of people know this passage or know 
one of the verses from this passage. But I'm going to read this out of the scripture version. And I'm going to point some things out. And then we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to point some other things out or whatever. And you'll see what I'm saying. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Starting at verse 15. This will be yod heh -Vah speaking. He said, see, I have set before you today life and good and death and evil. And that I am commanding you today to love yod heh -Vah your Elohim. To walk in his ways, to guard his commands and his laws and his right rulings. And you shall live and increase. And yod heh vav -Hey, your Elohim, shall bless you in the land which you go to possess. Verse 17. But, but, that's a big but. But, if your heart turns away and you do not obey, and shall be drawn away, and shall bow down to other mighty ones, other gods, what that means other mighty ones and serve them i have declared to you today that you shall certainly perish you shall not prolong your days in the land which you are passing over the jordan to enter and possess verse 19 i have called the heavens and the earth as a witness today against you I have set before you life and death, blessings and the curse. Therefore, you shall choose life so that you live, both you and your seed. Verse 20. To love yod heh vav -Hey, your Elohim. To obey his voice and to cling to him. For he is your life. And the length of your days to dwell in the land which yod heh -Vav -Hey swore to your fathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Jacob, to give them. Okay. Now, if we back up and we look at this. In verse 19. Actually, if you start at the beginning, in verse 15, he says, life and good and death and evil. He's making the dichotomy between the two. And in verses 16, he says, Obey, walk in his ways, guard his commands, his laws, his right rulings, you shall increase. That's life and good. And in 17, he says, But, here's come, here comes the death and the evil, the curse. He says, But if your heart turns away, and you do not obey, you shall be drawn away, and shall bow down to other mighty ones and serve them. I declare today, you shall certainly perish. All right. And in 19, he basically sums it up again. He says, I have set before you life and death, the blessings and the curse. Therefore, choose life. Okay. So we learn from this, that if you obey his commands, his Torah, he said, bless it. It's not a curse. It's a blessing. But if you disobey, that's the curse. The Torah, the instructions are not the curse. It's when you disobey, they become a curse. Okay? Does that make sense? So that verse up there, when people want to read it, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. They equate the curse and the law as the same thing. No, they're not. You got the instructions. You can obey them and you get blessings. You disobey them and you get curses. Alright. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this one in there because a lot of the language, a lot of the phraseology in that passage is very similar to something else. And I know I'm gonna have people out there, and I'm gonna throw this is another reason I'm gonna throw this in there. A lot of people are going to go back a couple of verses and where I'm re I read out of Galatians 3.13. You're going to have a couple of people who are going to go back up to, I think it's verse 10. 
and they're going to read all that stuff, and they're going to say, well, you can't keep the law, and the laws, <coughs> you know, if you continue in it, you're going to be cursed by it and all that, the way it's written. Well, I'm going to just show you something. I'm going to show you something. Okay. <clears throat> Do we understand what a false prophet is? A lot of people you hear, he's a false teacher, he's a false prophet. And not many people truly understand what that is. Like I've said before, and I'll say it again. Use biblical terms in biblical ways. Let the Bible define terms. Okay? Now we're going to define what a false prophet is. And we're going to determine whether or not Paul was a false prophet. And whether or not he was teaching against the Torah, the instructions of Yah. Okay? Like I said, back in that passage in Deuteronomy 30, verse 17, it says, But if your heart turns away, and you do not obey, and shall be drawn away, and shall bow down to other mighty ones, and serve them, as in, that's a bad thing. Don't do that. That's a bad thing. And then he goes on in verse 20, and it says, Actually, let me read the end of verse 19 going into 20 because it's all one big long sentence. It says, Therefore you shall choose life so that you may live, both you and your seed. Verse 20. To love yod heh vav -Heh, your Elohim. To obey his voice and to cling to him. For he is your life and the length of your days. And then it goes on to talk about dwelling in the land. Okay, now if we go. If we go over to Deuteronomy 13. And we start at verse 1. We get some of the similar language of what we just read in that passage in chapter 30. But I'm going to read this, and I'm going to explain. Deuteronomy 30, verse 1, it says, When there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he shall give you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder shall come true, of which he has spoken to you, saying, let us go after other mighty ones. And now what it said back up there in verse 17, Deuteronomy 30, 17. If your heart turns away, you do not obey. You should be drawn away and you shall bow down to other mighty ones and serve them. Okay. Back down to Deuteronomy 13, verse 2. This is, uh, and the sign of wonder shall come true of which he has spoken, meaning a prophet. He has spoken to you saying, let us go after other mighty ones which you have not known and serve them. Verse, thir uh, verse 3, do not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For yod heh vav -Hey, your Elohim is trying, trying you. To know whether you love yod heh vav -Hey, Elohim, yod heh vav -Hey, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being. So what do we get from that? First off, the very first thing he says is if he gives you a sign or a wonder that comes to pass, that comes true. And then he says, it prophet says, let's go worship other gods and serve them. Now, what's, what, what in there qualifies him as a false prophet or a true prophet? This person is a false prophet. Why? Because he let, let's go after other mighty ones and serve them, other gods and serve them. So what we learn from this is that a false prophet can give signs and wonders that will come to pass.
So just because they, they give you a sign and a wonder and it happens, that doesn't make them a true prophet of Yah. What makes them a true prophet is if they tell you to follow and obey Yah. Now let's keep reading. Verse 4, he says this. It ends with this. It says, Walk after yod heh vav -Hey, your Elohim, and fear Him, and guard His commands, and obey His voice, and serve Him, and cling to Him. You see, that's the same language that was also back up there in Deuteronomy 17. It says, it's just the other says, But if your heart turns away, you do not obey, and you bow down to other mighty ones and serving them. But the very last verse in that, Deuteronomy 30, 20, it says, Love yod heh vav -Hey yod elohim to obey his voice and cling to him. You see what I'm saying? If a prophet, somebody claiming to be a prophet, teacher, or somebody comes to you and they try to tell you, no matter what they say to you, Signs, wonders, lying signs and wonders. We all know that term. You can't, a prophet is not justified by lying signs and wonders. A prophet is justified whether or not he tells you to serve God, serve Elohim, Yah Most High, or serve other gods. Okay? Now, what does serving Yah Elohim Most High look like? We just read it. Serving Yah Elohim Most High. But if your verse Deuteronomy 30, 17, but if your heart turns away and you do not obey, and shall be drawn away and shall bow down to other mighty ones and serve them. Okay. So that's talking about serving other gods. But what would it mean to serve Yah Most High? To obey. Ain't that what the very end of it says? To obey his voice, cling to him. And the whole passage is talking about if you obey the Torah, you'll have blessings. If you disobey, you'll have curses. So if somebody comes to you and they, they tell you you don't have to obey the law, that makes them a false prophet. Not whether or not that little magic trick and they, they, the lying signs and wonder come to pass or not. That has nothing to do with it. But if they tell you to follow other gods, and following other gods is not following his instructions. Because by you not obeying his instructions and you obeying some other instructions, you are worshiping a false god. Yahweh says, Serve me, obey me, cling to me, do what I tell you. Obey my voice. And he set out his instructions for us to obey. But if you don't do that and you do something else, you're worshiping a false god. It's plain and simple. And if somebody comes to you and tells you, you don't have to do all that stuff, that's a false prophet. We just read it. Makes sense. I'm going to go back and I'm about done. I'm going to go back up there. It says, For Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Like I said, people want to equate the law and the curse is the same thing. No, we just learned. The instructions are up here. You can choose to obey or choose to not obey. You choose to obey, you got life and blessings. If you choose to disobey, you got death and curses. The instructions, the Torah, the law, is not a curse. It's what you do with it determines whether it's a curse or a blessing. Makes sense? Just like that credit card. That credit card's not a curse. It's that debt that you've racked up is the curse. But here's the question. Because, let's say... Your father, he racked up all this debt on this credit card. 
and your father comes along and he pays all that debt off. Are you right in turning around and racking up more debt? No. Yeshua took that curse out of the way. He paid the debt. But that doesn't give us a right to continue to rack up debt, to continue to sin. We all know sin. 1 John 3, 4, He who transgresses the law sins, for sin is transgression of the law. Even though the curse, the punishment for breaking the law is taken out of the way, we still, we, we, we're not supposed to, well, he's, he's paid all that, so I can keep doing it. No, 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 no. Would your father, I mean, literally, would your father not tan that high and take you out behind the woodshed and fire that backside up with that leather belt if you kept racking up debt on that credit card? But see, like I said in the beginning, and I said I chose my words carefully, that child, that baby, thought they were mature and they could continue to rack up that debt. But that was a child's mindset, a babe's mindset. But to those that are mature, they know. Don't need to be racking up no debt. So I'm going to ask you a question. Are you a babe in Christ and you're going to keep racking up your sin debt just because it's paid for? Are you going to be a mature babe and actually listen to and obey and cling to the commands of the Father, Yah. Hmm. With that, I say shalom, folks. And don't just read your Bibles, but study them. Like and share our videos, comment below, good or bad, give us ideas for new videos, but above all, pray for us and subscribe to the channel, it'll be a little circle icon with a cow's face on the bottom right hand of the screen, and with that, I say shalom, and don't just read your Bibles, but study them.